Statistics, metrics, calculations, a hint at events to come, and a quick update on the PS5 enhancement upgrade. You're right, kids, it's Ras Clark, and welcome to Arc Community News. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share around, and let's get into it. So, the community crunch dropped last night with sadly no update on the Genesis 2 teaser that we know said has been working hard at getting to us. Who knows what's going on behind the scenes. I expect as we're nearing the approach of the DLC that there's more time being invested in making sure they hit their target of release than perhaps sharing some information with us, which isn't the end of the world. If they have to sacrifice some news in order to make sure we get the map as intended in March, then we can forgive them a little for it. It's no secret COVID and restrictions are making life a lot more difficult than it used to be. So I'm guessing that's had some knock on effect with development and let's just cross our fingers that they hit the date as intended. So the community crunch dropped with no details about that, but they did go into some detail on statistics of what is killing what in ARK. As we can see, and it's no surprise, last week in ARK, the absolute pain in everyone's rear end, the Raptor. The Raptor is the dino that kills everyone the most. I'm not surprised, I couldn't tell you how many times I've turned a corner, I've spawned on a beach, and a raptor's there, ready and waiting, to pounce and rip my face off. The Dilo's surprisingly up there, not being that much of a powerful dino and can be avoided. How are so many people getting killed by Dilo's? Fair enough, when you're above on the beach at those low levels, I get it, it happens. But to be the second dino that kills people the most, my god, I'm surprised the dodo isn't up there. Piranha, no surprise. I recall being killed many times, crossing my first river, to meet the adept end of sleeping with the fishes. Therizino, of course, I'm not surprised by that either. It looks like a warm, friendly friend that's minding their own business, but if you get a bit too close, whoop get Freddy Krueger. And we can see what weapons are killing players across the platforms. Interestingly, there are more bobs on PS4 and Xbox than there are on PC being killed by the easily crafted wooden spear. And the top PC weapon being the compound bow, which is a really expensive weapon to make. So <laughs> it's really surprising the differences between the two. Obviously there are more beginners on console and we can assume there are more experienced players on PC with the fabricated sniper. With Pike being up there at no surprise, the crossbow being an early all rounder and surprisingly the bow. I admittedly have never used the bow, progressing straight from that to the crossbow. So it's interesting to see how many people are still using the bow. But I've got more statistics to share, as you may have noticed in the title. Who's playing what? PvE, PvP? Now, I know a lot of you, including myself really before this, believe PvP dominates ARK. Well guess what? It's actually a lot closer than you think. Out of the average 40,000 players playing on Steam across the last month, an average of 170,000 of them being unique players, there's a very close gap in what they choose to play. With PvE servers being an average of 36.2 thousand over the last month, and PvP servers being an average of 36.6 thousand over the last month, the gap is close. And then if you account for the amount of people that are playing it in single player, it's pretty much there and I suspect that PvE probably just tips the crown. What's even more interesting is the gap between who plays modded and who doesn't on PC, with both around 18,000 averaged, meaning modded arc is just as favoured as the official grind. And we can also review which mods are up there and making more players preferring to play that modded experience. With at no surprise Structures Plus being at number one, it's certainly a huge advancement in ARK that offers a lot of cool features to make your ARK lives better. So it's no wonder ARK Genesis Part 2 is going to bring some of those features in their own unique way and try and pull people back to the core experience. Like the awesome spyglass that gives you a lot of detailed features that they've now integrated this new taming UI to offer an official comparative. 
We can see which maps are the most popular, which presents some uncanny timing with my map survival guides. If you haven't seen them, check my ARC tips playlist. I'm running through all the maps and giving you a general overview of each map to help you get on your feet. With the island being number one, the very first map and perhaps the best way to learn ARC, followed of course by Ragnarok, which I would arguably say is the easiest map to learn the game in. And it's great to see Extinction hitting the ranks, being a very different offering to what ARC originally was. And I'll be covering Extinction in great detail very soon. And we can also see unofficial servers are taking over. Look at the difference between unofficial and official servers. And whilst yes, it's no surprise on the gap of servers available due to everybody wanting to open their own server, we can see that a lot of them are doing it right. With an average of 10,000 players across official servers and an average of 26,000 players along unofficials. Again, this is all PC, so this doesn't include PlayStation or Xbox stats. I'd love to know these stats in detail on the consoles as well. And devs, if you're watching this, come on. If you're going to do a community crunch on your stats, let's go into more detail and grab all of these statistics and lay them out. I know nobody wants a console war anymore and it might fuel it, but for players especially that perhaps own a PlayStation, an Xbox and a PC, perhaps they want to know where more players are playing so they can jump in and experience the busiest experience that they can. Sadly, again, there's no EVO event this weekend and I'm not that surprised. EVO events did start becoming very regular but lest we forget, the rates doubled last year as well. And whilst I think the EVO events were being pushed out because of the COVID crisis and giving you some more incentive to play and take your mind off that, it's still rates that are eventually going to stress the servers. So, so the team need to dial back to perhaps the EVO events we were used to. And it sounds like the next one is going to be in the next season event. And what is the event? I covered it before in a previous news video. If you're an experienced ARC player, you'll have played this event before. Love is in the air, love evolved. Dropping somewhere around Valentine's Day, it's a great event that bumps up the breeding stats so you can raise an army super quick with some ways to boost that affinity attained on imprint and a bunch of cosmetics to celebrate the day. And it sounds like it's definitely coming as it's been mentioned on Twitter by Sed, the community manager, so I think we'll be seeing it possibly next weekend, maybe the weekend after. And to touch on the PS5 enhancement upgrade, I'm sorry, there is no news yet available. Nothing has been mentioned. I've tried to ask the team for an update with no news back yet. And I don't want to concern those expectations, but it sounds like they are putting more resources into getting Genesis 2 out on time. And it's possible that the enhancement upgrade might not drop until then or even after. Sadly, it's not a case of using the code that they used on the Xbox, or at least that's my belief, as there's no way it can take this amount of time without some drastic changes to make sure it fits on the PS5 properly. But damn does the PS5 need this enhancement upgrade since it dropped on PS5, where I've got to say that initial experience was fantastic. Sadly, in patches since then, the experience has gotten worse, with disconnections happening all the time now. For me, personally, I'm disconnecting almost every time I transfer server or bed. And if you've got the same problems, go to the forums, let the team know. That's the only way they're going to know if you're having an issue. I've even got my own thread in the forums, so go and post your experience. And let's hope the dev team fix these issues and bring this enhancement upgrade soon. Oh, and a quick shout out to Jade Plays Games. He pretty much inspired me to go through the stats in this video. He's a great critic of all survival games, so go check him out, kids, if you're interested in anything survival based. You certainly won't regret it. And that wraps up the news today, kids. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a comment below if you did. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Subscribe, share around. My name's Ross Clark and as always, peace out.